The WHAF's 11 night team is always new at 11. Right now, the shooting at Louisville's Dosker Manor. Why did it happen? He loved rock and roll music. The victim, a security guard. Family members are talking to the night team about the attack. Plus, and I think we can offer those things that they're looking for. The mayor says Louisville needs more Jack Harlow's and Jeff Brahms sticking around. Young people investing back in the city. How is he going to make that work? See the plan right now on the WHAS 11 night team. It was an argument over a kayak at the Dosker Manor Senior Housing Complex in downtown Louisville that led to a fatal shooting. That's what family members are telling the WHS 11 night team tonight. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us on this Friday evening. I'm Doug Prophet. They are also trying to make sense of why, and they are talking to WHS 11 night team's Taylor Woods. He was not a bad guy. He was not a bad guy at all. The family of Antoine Shackleford is grieving his loss after he was shot and killed. The New Albany man died Saturday night at Dosker Manor Apartments. They say he loved water, fishing, and was good with his hands. Anything. He, oh, I know how to fix that. <laughs> he knew how to fix, he knew how to fix <laughs> anything. A suspect in the shooting hasn't been named but is in custody. Shackleford, 39 years old, leaves behind a wife and five children. Tiana White, his stepsister, says he was working at Dosker Manor as security and his life was taken away too soon. He didn't deserve to die of a petty argument or whatever it was. Cousin Artisha Jones says a security guard told her the shooting happened over a dispute over a kayak left in the hallway by an elevator. The guard told Jones that anything left by the elevator is usually up for grabs at Dosker Manor, so Shackleford took it. And then he tried to go talk to the guy. Um, him and the guy got into it, so he was just like, forget it. He wasn't going to, you know, okay, I'm not even going to give it back. The so it was still in her. Moments later, they say Shackleford walked off to go to the store, and when he returned back, that's when the shooting happened. They said, hey, the guy's looking for you. So he went up there again. So when he went up there the second time, him and the guy started arguing again, and that's when somebody said they heard a gunshot. Chaco Ford's family now burdened emotionally and financially, and with the holidays around the corner, they have started a GoFundMe for his services. He didn't have life insurance. His wife just got diagnosed with stage four brain cancer. Like, they can't come up with this money. Hoping they can lay him to rest peacefully. In Louisville, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 team on your side. More on this story, you know, residents at Dosker Manor for months have been asking the Metro Housing Authority to do more to address their concerns. We talked with Louisville's Chanel Helm, who is helping residents organize. She's demanding that Metro Housing Authority act to improve Dosker Manor. And ignoring um, the maintenance and ignoring um, the change that can happen, they are absolutely fueling the violence. We also contacted the Metro Housing Authority. They sent us a statement saying in part that they are cooperating with LMPD as the police continue to investigate. They go on to say they told residents they can speak with a social worker to connect them to community resources. Right now we want to update the breaking news from earlier tonight in New Hampshire. One person is dead after a man opened fire in the lobby of a psychiatric hospital in Concord. The shooter was then fatally shot by a state trooper who was assigned to guard the hospital. Police have now identified the person killed as 63-year-old Bradley Haas, a security guard for the hospital, and a retired police officer. The hospital in Concord is the only state-run psychiatric hospital for adults in the state. As of this newscast, police say they still do not have a motive for the shooting. Well, more Jack Harlow's, more Jeff Brahms. The mayor talked about them both as great examples for young people who also need to invest in Louisville, stay here, don't leave here. The mayor is calling for hundreds of millions of dollars in incentive money to get it done. WHS 11 night teams, Connor Steffen shows us the city is targeting one demographic to bring the mayor's dream to life. Even the cold, damp conditions can't keep foot traffic down in one of Louisville's fastest growing and most popular neighborhoods. The restaurants, the venues for music, and all of our museums. But the question on the minds of city leaders this week, are Louisville's young, trendy neighborhoods like Nulu enough to keep young people here? Well, I'm sure we're not where we need to be. I, I know we're not.
uh, because I've seen it. That's Jeffrey Hoffman. We love to see you young people going to college. Who we found on a Zoom call as he's spending his retirement mentoring young people, a part of the ACE Mentor Program. Why it's so important. To entice new companies and firms to come into Louisville because they know we have the talented workforce. Map for national foundation. Retaining that young talent is a key peg in Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg's recently announced economic development plan. A wish list that includes investing $100 million toward the downtown city streets. This plan is also focused on opportunity. The challenge in this case, Louisville lags behind pretty much every peer city in terms of its population in a key demo. Workers 25 to 39 years old. The opportunity Greenberg sees is tripling that population by 2035 through ambitious investments. And we'll keep working on the intern thing. For Hoffman, one of the biggest fixes to make is education. We have really got to work on our education system here in Jefferson County. Ask his mentee, UK freshman Jacob Doctro. I think just uh, the job opportunities would probably be the biggest thing. Doctro says he's likely going to stay in state after graduating and possibly move to Louisville. But then there are others that are like, they've grown up here and they, they just want something new. It's yet to be seen what funding will look like for this plan as the city's ambitions remain high. In Louisville, Connor Steff in the WHAS 1119 on your side. Now, Mayor Greenberg's plan also includes a total of $40 million to invest in universal pre-K for Louisville. $20 million for the universal pre-K pilot program here will come from the city. But is that feasible in the city budget? We asked Metro Council President Marcus Winkler, who says it's a possibility. If current trends continue uh, and we have the type of growth that we've had, um, then I think there there could very likely be room for this type of initiative or something similar. Greenberg tells us the money wouldn't just be for infrastructure, but also to attract, hire, and train more child care workers, as many centers across our city are experiencing a staffing shortage. And the conversation on education continued tonight on KET's Comet on Kentucky. WHS 11's Isaiah Kim Martinez joined the panel of Kentucky journalists tonight to discuss the news. He told anchor Bill Bryant that in the upcoming General Assembly, Kentucky Republicans are focused on school choice and a potential constitutional amendment goes back to 2022. Of course, we had that charter school bill passed, ultimately struck down. Now the Republicans are trying to go about this a different way, amend the state constitution to allow some of these public funds <clears throat> uh, to go toward getting uh, charter schools up and running. And ultimately their goal is to get the amendment on the ballot and have the voters decide. The week's top headlines are discussed on Comment on Kentucky every Friday night at 8, the longest running public affairs show on KET with rotating Kentucky journalists. WHS TV has a long history with Comment, and we are so proud that Isaiah continued that tradition tonight. It was a great program. If you want to watch tonight's episode, Comment runs again through the weekend and is posted on the KET website.